Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be covering lab number four in the authentication module titled Username Enumeration via Subtly Different Responses. All right, before we continue with the video, I'd like to announce that this video is part of a course that I offer on my academy. Now you might be wondering, why would I buy a course that is made available for free on YouTube? Well, there are four reasons why you might want to do that. Number one is that you gain early access to recorded material. As soon as I record new videos, I make them available through my course right away. Whereas on YouTube, they'll only be released on a weekly schedule. Reason number two is that you gain access to a Discord channel where you can ask questions. The Discord channel is divided into topics that we cover in the course and if you run into any issues, you get to ask questions about anything related to the course material. Reason number three is that you no longer have to deal with YouTube ads or sponsor messages. And last but not least, reason number four is you get to support me. Any revenue generated from this course will go back into maintaining the academy and creating more videos and courses that will be made available for free on my YouTube channel. So if you're interested in buying the course, make sure to check out the link in the description. And that is it. Let's go back to our video. If you do not have an account on the Web Security Academy, you can get one by visiting the URL portswigger.net slash websecurity and clicking on the sign up button. I already have an account and I am logged in. So to access the exercise, I'm going to click on Academy. Select all labs. And then do a search for authentication. And select lab number four titled Username Enumeration via Subtly Different Responses. All right, let's get started. This lab is subtly vulnerable to username enumeration and password brute force attacks. It has an account with a predictable username and password, which can be found in the following word lists. To solve the lab, enumerate a valid username, brute force this user's password, then access their account page. All right, so the target goal over here is to enumerate first a valid username of the application and then brute force the user's password. And in order to do both items, we have candidate usernames and passwords that we can use. All right, let's access the lab. Now notice over here, this is the built-in browser in Burp. And so all my requests are already being passed in my Burp proxy. Since we are going to be using the intruder functionality in Burp, we are using the professional version. In the community edition, the intruder functionality is heavily throttled, and so it'll take a very long time to complete the lab. Okay. The first thing we're going to do is click on my account. And uh, usually in a real engagement, you are given a valid username and a valid password. And so what you could do is put in a valid username and an invalid password, hit login, send the request to compare, and then put an invalid username and an invalid password to hit login and send it to compare and see if there are differences in the application for a valid username or an invalid username. However, in this scenario over here, we don't have a valid username to confirm if there's differences. And so what we're going to do is we're going to run this script right over here. So the list of usernames, let's copy it and see if any of the usernames generates a different error or a different response than the rest of the usernames. That means that that username might be valid. So uh, to do that, we go to burp and let's just send any username. So test and password test, hit login. This is the request that is performed. Let's send it to intruder. And intruder over here, let's clear because we don't want to fuzz everything that it had highlighted. We just want to fuzz the username. So highlight this, click on add. And in payloads, we just have simple list and we click on paste to paste the candidate usernames list. And then it's just as simple as clicking on start attack and waiting for the attack to complete. Again, we're using the professional version and so this is really fast. Now what I'm looking for is differences in maybe uh, length or uh, status code or so on. Now you could see over here, the length is slightly different for each one and I'm not entirely sure why. So let's go to response right over here and render. So over here, it says it's invalid username and password. 
And then for this one, it's also just invalid username and password. Let's send this to comparer. So send to comparer and then let's send this one to comparer because I want to know why there's a difference of one over here. Okay, let's compare words. Okay, so it's just the analytics script that is different for each one. I believe it could have like an extra digit or so on and that's why the length is increased by one. So we definitely can't use that to determine if we have a valid username or not. So let's see the status code. All of the status code look like it's 200 so we can't use that either. Um, let's filter on length over here. So most of them are 3075. We've got 3076, 77, 78, 79, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, and that is it. So again, all of this looks to me like it's not a way to differentiate if it's valid or not. So we're going to need to get creative. Now, if we go back to our regular burp session and we go to repeater, and we didn't send it to repeater. So let's go to proxy and send it to repeater. I'm going to put in a username that I know for sure does not exist. So let's say test and all these integers for sure this does not exist. So hit send and click on render. Now that's going to take a little bit of time to render. Here we go. So this is the error that we get invalid username or password. Let's go to raw and do a search on that error. And I'm gonna copy exactly this error over here. So I know this is the error that I get for an invalid username. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go back to Intruder, do a search on this exact error over here, and then do a negative search. What that means is if you don't find this error over here in any of the responses of these requests, then show that request to me. So I'm gonna hit apply and here we go. So this is interesting. It didn't find the error in this request and here we go. All right, so this is a pretty interesting lab because I've seen an exact vulnerability in the wild. So in the real world, that is really similar to this one. So the difference over here is that when it's an invalid username, you've got a dot, but when it's a valid username, but an invalid password, the developers had forgotten to include the dot after the string invalid username or password. And so this allows an attacker to enumerate valid usernames on the application. So we're just going to make a few notes over here. So the username is auto discover. Now all we have to do is enumerate the password. So let's close this, click on this card, and then go to intruder. We already have, we already have the request in intruder. So we're just going to clear again and add the username as auto discover because we know for sure that this is a valid username. And then the password over here, we're going to add it because that's the one that we need to brute force. And under payloads, we're going to remove this by clicking on clear. And we're going to go back over here and get the list of candidate passwords. And copy it over here. and then paste it here. All right, so what this does is it'll try every password in this position right over here. So usually when you log in, it should uh, redirect you to the account page of the user. And so we should be able to figure out if we got the right password, if we get a 302 uh, response code. So let's hit start attack and then filter on the response code. And here we go. So you could see there's a 302 over here in the response. It sends you to the My Accounts page or redirects you to the My Accounts page. And so we found a valid password. So let's again make it over here saying password is football. All right, so we've enumerated a valid username and password. Now let's test if we're correct. Let's close this and close this and say 
auto discover as the username and football as the password hit login and here we go it says congratulations you solved the lab all right, so we successfully completed the exercise by exploiting the vulnerability manually. We usually script it in Python, but because there was an analysis component to the username portion of the script uh, that requires a human being to actually analyze the requests, we won't be scripting this exploit in Python. In the next lab, we'll look at another case of a broken authentication vulnerability. If you like the video, hit the subscribe and share button so that the video reaches a wider audience. Also, make sure to check out my course if you're interested in seeing more videos like this one. Thank you and see you in the next video.